Hi everyone, today I'm going to be going over how I recreated X's or formerly known as Twitter's bottom navigation bar. Bottom navigation bars could come in handy, especially when using a web app on a mobile device. I notice a lot of websites have these, especially YouTube, FootMob, and many more. Now let's get to it. So on my screen right now, I have the Visual Studio Code IDE as well as my local host open on the right. Now, before we get started, I'm assuming that you are trying to add bottom navigation to your project. The only thing that you need to install right now is an icon library, which you could find here at this website, which I will link in the description below. It is iconsets.iconify.design. It's a great icon library, open source as well. So you could go take a look at that. We are going to do an NPM install of that package. Once you got it installed, then you could go ahead and import whatever icon that you want. You could search it in here and it'll show up. This is an example icon. You just go ahead and copy this right here into your file. So that's how you use that. Once we get that out of the way, then we could go ahead and look at our code. I'm going to go ahead and run our project. So now it's running. Our bottom navigation isn't showing up yet because our screen isn't small enough. So we are going to go ahead and do inspect so our screen gets smaller. And now you can see our navigation is showing up. Now I'm just gonna be walking you through how this is done. There are four main files that we are going to take a look at and they are layout, bottom nav, use navigation, and you scroll. So the first place we're gonna start is at our layout. Now in our layout, this is where we are importing our bottom nav component. The reason why we have it here is because we want the bottom nav to always show up whatever screen that we're on. So let's say I click on explore, you can see that our route has changed, but our navigation is still there. And you can see the thickness of the icon has also increased. You can see if we change it to any other screen, the nav is still there. So this is where this is happening in our layout. So now that we've seen this, and we want to make sure that it's below our wrapper because we don't want this to shrink with our screen. We want it to be full width of our mobile device. Now, after looking at this, we could go ahead and look at our actual bottom nav component. So let's open that up. Let me close some tabs. Now here is our actual bottom nav component. At the top, you can see we are setting our use client because it's client side rendering. We're importing use navigation and use scrolling effect. Use navigation is handling our navigation state. So we want to make sure that when we click on a specific button that it's navigating to a specific page that we are looking for. We are checking if a page is active. If it's active, that way we know we have to switch our icon or make the thickness different. And for our use scrolling effect hook, as you saw in the demo, when we scroll down, Twitter makes the bottom nav transparent so it's easier for you to see the next tweet. As you scroll back up, it shows back up. So that effect is happening there. And the last import that we have is our icon import. This is how we are getting our icons to show up here. We'll be going through those files in just a second. So let's go down. So here's one variable, scroll direction. We're checking if the direction is up or down. We are checking if the direction is equal to up. If it's not equal to up, then we are making sure that the opacity is there and that it's a little bit more opaque. Now, if we scroll down, we could see more of the Tailwind CSS styling. Let me open this up some more. So we have a fixed bottom zero bottom nav, which makes sense. We want it to stick to the bottom. So that's how you do that. We want to make sure that the width is full, specific padding, and all the other styling is happening there. This nav class element is added. So depending on this condition, this is how it's controlling the opacity. This is our actual bar. So we are doing a flex or making sure that all the items are in a row, that they're centered, and the spacing between is used by justify around. Now I'll talk about one example right here. So we have our icon wrapped around a link. This is a specific icon that we're using. So this is for the home icon. We want a specific height and width. And if it's active, we want it to be filled. If it's not active, then we want to use the outline icon. So this is being done with the other icons. If you want to take a look at it, you could go ahead 
And that's the gist of the bottom nav. It's not too difficult. And then another important part that I forgot to mention is it's being hidden as soon as it hits a specific dimension. So when it's on a small screen, then it gets hidden. So if we increase this size right now, right, it's gone. As soon as we start shrinking it, then it shows up around here. You can see our bottom nav shows up as soon as we start opening it opening it up again, it becomes responsive and it gets hidden. So that's how that's happening. So we could go ahead and move on to our hooks that we were importing, right? We have our use navigation, which is pretty straightforward. We have our use client. We are using our use effect and use state. So we have initialized some constants and depending on the path. So we are using the use path name hook from the uh, next navigation to call to see what path we're on. And then depending on that, that's when we set it to true or false. And it's returning these variables. And it's inside a use effect because if there's any change, we wanna make sure that we are catching those changes. So that is what our use navigation hook is doing. And lastly, we have our use scroll hook. Now our use scroll is checking where we are on the screen, if we have scrolled or not, if we're scrolling up or down, it's returning back a string of up and down. So then if we go back, so that's where that up is being used here. It's being referenced from our setting, our setup right here. And yeah, that's basically it. That's how you create the bottom navigation bar. In my next video, I'm probably going to talk about how we are implementing this side navigation. So keep a lookout for that. If you want to check out how these tabs are working, you can look at my previous video of how I discuss how to do this. And yeah, and that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Everything will be in the description section below. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments or in our Discord community. And thanks for watching.